if you have like a lot of groceries or something. Right. Yeah. When your hands are full. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> hey, good evening. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I'll let you uh, do your invite yeah, then. Yeah, I'll do all my okay. invites. We'll get the invites out. I am Pastor Andrew Van Kieran, and with me is my beautiful wife, Sheila. And we are so happy you have joined us tonight, whether it be live or watching us on delay. Uh, welcome, and we have a lot to get to tonight. And tonight's subject is going to be worship music or Christian music. Let's put it that way. Christian music? Christian music. I have to share it from here because I can't figure out how to do it on my laptop. Oh, okay. Not a problem. <laughs> do share. Do share. But before we launch into our billboard review and uh, other things, um, I wanted to highlight what I received in the mail from Franklin Graham in his decision at Northeast Tour. And he will be in Portland, Maine, Burlington. No kidding. All the places now now that we're not there. Right. Manchester, our old. Perfect. Manchester, New Hampshire, our old hometown. May 23rd. Uh, Syracuse, May 30th for my friends in New York. Nice. <clears throat> John Wilson. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Springfield, Mass, May 25th. So, <laughs> hey, uh, if you're around, check it out. He's a good speaker. It'll be... Uh, uh, good music provided to yeah. for you, I'm sure, too, also. So. That's going to be awesome. Uh, I think I got him out. I don't, you know. We missed him, what, three years ago when he did the Capitol Tour? He did a Capitol Tour of every capital in the United States. Yes. Yeah, we did. We missed it. That was kind of sad. Oh, well. But moving right along. So, uh, this week on Billboard, the Billboard... Overall, Lauren Daigle is still number one. However, we have um, Switch featuring um, Dylan Chase Symphony, and that is being streamed or downloaded on Apple. Uh, it's actually number 15 on the hot Christian chart, nice. but it's number one as far as the Apple, the ACC, CHR chart okay. is concerned on, on Billboard. So they are <clears throat> coming up. From behind fast. Skillet has a new song out. Skillet does have a new song out. Anchor is their new single. Their new album, which is going to be Victorious, is going to be released August 2nd. So for our hard rock Christian fans, right. that's going to be August 2nd. And of course, they'll be out on the road. They have been on the road and touring. And they, they played the, the, one of their new songs off the upcoming album when we saw them. That was back last summer, you know. I didn't realize that was going to be off the new album. Yep. Yes. Nice. And yeah, I haven't had any time to be doing that. And what I found today was very interesting for all you Chris Tomlin uh, contemporary Christian fans that he sold out the Hollywood Bowl and it was the largest crowd he's ever played. That's crazy. In front of. California, well, okay. They need, the they need a little bit of it. There, California. we just said it. I've, we, we I've said, said it out loud. Right. I'm owning it. I'll yeah. be in California next week, as a matter of fact. Yes, and of course, they're never there when I'm there. It's not like <laughs> I can catch a good concert while I'm in town for work. Right? Dang, that always happens. That's the way it bounces, you yeah. know? Gosh. God save hockey, John Wilson says. Yes. John, Bruins, God is saving hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I think God is saving hockey fans. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. More than the game. Yeah, you're killing them, man. You're, you're killing them with the Bruins thing. I know you are. Yeah, I know. That's all right. So pay attention tonight because I'm going to have some questions, some survey stuff going on here. And uh, um, I saw that Toby Mac was doing a theater tour this summer, mm. which is kind of like the, that intimate, that close, small, kind yeah, of cool that'd thing. be cool. So we need to get, rockers, we need to get some of them to come here. Although they go to Bismarck and. Fargo and down at the, Sioux Falls, yeah. down at Sioux Falls, uh, and Iowa, right for that big event. Yeah. But forgive me for my stuffiness here. It never seems that we can get it on our schedule. It's going to happen sooner or later. Yeah. We will keep the faith. Keep the faith. Pray about it. Pray. Yes. Let's uh, let's get into this. We'll pray and then we'll get into our subject. Okay. All right. Dear Lord, thank you once again for having the. Ability and the health to come before you and 
read your word and share and learn more about what you have to share with us, dear Lord. And may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to your sight, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Turn your so up? I did turn my volume all the way up. You know what I want to tell you before we get started? It was brought to my attention that um, sometimes people think that we talk about this stuff before we talk about this stuff. Oh, like we have. Like, for example, I never know what Andrew's going to preach on Sunday <laughs> until <laughs> I show up like everybody else. True. I never know what we're going to be talking about on Wednesday nights until I show up here. True. It's true. And I like that because, uh, most of the time, but because uh, I think it's, it allows for spontaneous conversation, right? Yeah, that's what um, we want. We want right, and so so just to clarify, like we don't practice, we don't prep, and I think there was a couple of weeks ago. I really, truth be told, was not in a really great mood, and True. then on top of that, the topic that we were discussing was really not really doing it for me it just wasn't <laughs> resonating with me and i was just having a really hard time it's all right and when i watched the video after i'm like oh my gosh but you could tell um so i think that's why you know sometimes we're a little more enthusiastic than other times true just because i so i'm okay like, hey, what are we talking about well, and then it's, i it's the subject too i mean i find out when we show up well dylan could say yeah that's that, that is the deal he's been sitting between us and knows that just follow andrew's lead and go with the conversation just go wherever it leads you yes i'll follow the yellow brick road <laughs> yeah. so tonight's scripture reading is going to be from psalms 150 that's chapter 150 verses one through six let me put my spectacles on here The caption to this is, let everything praise the Lord. Now I hear the word of the Lord. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Oh, that's you. That's me. <laughs> Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, you like that clanging part being I a do. drum player. I do. Yeah. That's, mm, that's my, that's my home. And, of course, we can't overlook probably what is the most famous verse for um, <clears throat> raising a, a joyful noise to the Lord. It's, uh, it's Psalms 98, chapter 9, 4, verse 4. Uh, Make a joyful noise to the Lord. I like all joyful noises. You do? I like music anyways. But So the question I have for everybody, okay, watching... Do you prefer classic Christian, contemporary, or no, excuse me. Do you prefer classic worship music as versus contemporary Christian music? <laughs> uh, I think you're going to get a mixed bag of answers on that, right? I mean, I like, you know, I didn't want to like some of these cl classic Baptist hymns that I didn't know and had to learn. Um, and some of them were really great and the lyrics were really inspiring and the message and others not so much. However, they kind of grew on me after a little while, you know. You see, for part of, part of my experience is uh, memories, you know. Right. I, uh, hearing my dad, I can hear, still hear my dad Sing saying so some loud. of the classics. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And my mom and uh, Uncle Richie and Aunt Sue and my family, I can still smell the wood of the old pews. Right. And the original mm -hmm. Forest Lake Baptist yeah. Church, you know, things like that really speak to my heart. Um, so I got to say, you know, I got to be honest. I got to I gotta say both, you know, uh, because when we do some of the classic stuff, 
you and Abby pick on me, which is okay. I, I don't mind that. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, I like all of it. And I think there's a certain comfort, right? Like, you know, I grew up in the Catholic Church. And um, so I know all the Catholic hymns. I know all of them, you know. But on the radio, I listen to contemporary Christian music all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I know all that stuff. Um, and I'm amazed at how much I do know versus right. how much I don't know. I agree and with now that. I know all these other songs uh, from being exposed at the Baptist church that I never heard. Um, and it's funny because we'd be um, singing a song and it would have the same title as another song from the Catholic church, right? Okay. And so in my mind, I'm hearing and singing that song because I know that, but it's a different song. But the title's the same, you know. And then you get into this, you know, Toby Mac stuff. Right. You know, kind of the rap. You know, how can you have Christian rap, you know? Just like, how can you have Christian hard rock? Well, I think it's good, right? Because not every... It's like everything else, right? Not everybody wears the same kind of clothes. Not everybody reads the same books. Not everybody listens to the same kind of music. But what's the most important piece about the music is the message. And so... I think it's great because you get a message that's going out in different formats and resonating with different groups of people who have different styles and different tastes and, right. and it moves them differently than if it were just all classic, maybe, you know, uh, do you know what I mean? Like classical music, if that's all there was, maybe people, so, maybe people wouldn't hear the message. We have some people making some comments. What do we have here? Stacy says she likes both traditional hymns and contemporary Christian. I'm with you. Uh, John Wilson says you can't beat a traditional How Great Thou Art. Definitely one of the great greats. True, true, right. true. Um, and Bill says it's your roots. Uh, depends on, you know, and to your point too, John, it depends on what kind of mood you're in. Right. Your roots. Sometimes <laughs> you're in just a place that you want something a little bit more classical, a little bit more somber maybe. Mm -hmm. And then other times you're just ready to, you know, rip somebody's face off and you want to get into some, you know, Red or some skillet, or Red. <laughs> you're working out, or the leather, leather black, or something like right. that, right? You're working out, so, you need some upbeat music. Yeah, so I think it depends, but again, I think the the fundamental important piece is there's a message, and I think uh, there's a lot of crossover now, right, with music. I mean, you can hear Lauren Daigle and and Toby Mac and Mercy Me on. Crossover stations that well, are I'm, not I'm, Christian stations. I'm glad stations. you brought that up because it's one of the reasons why I want to talk about this subject tonight. Yeah. You know, we saw Lauren Daigle on the Billboard Awards. Right. And I don't know how else to say this to the Christian community, okay, but we're really good at eating our own, okay? We're <laughs> really good at beating up our own people. I mean, you know, here's Lauren, Christian music artist out there on mm -hmm. TV, pouring mm -hmm. her guts out mm -hmm. for the love of God in her most stinging criticism isn't from the secular side, it's from the Christian side. Yeah, well, right, and those are the people who need to spend a little more time. Well, it's... it's, it's, it's but that's, that's always how it is, right? You attack people who you are... You attack what you're comfortable with. I don't know. I, it's like, uh, you know, sometimes you're always... You know, you save your uh, your worst mood for your spouse or your kids, whatever. Because there's comfort there. It's right, wrong, or different. It's a known entity, right? But um, to me, it's a it's a it's pharisaical. Mm -hmm. is, a, is the best word I can come up with. It's that got you uh, centrist, uh, critical, fault finding yeah. spirit that. You know, as we as we read in Psalms, and also, you know, throughout the Pauline letters in the New Testament, Apostle Paul, it's let all things be done for building up, for building up Christians. Let all things be done for glorifying Christ, for glorifying God and the greatest. I mean, that's really the purpose of our lives is to glorify God. Yeah, but highest. I mean, you don't see that tearing down just in music. You see that church. You experience it when you go. You experience True. it when you leave, right? Um, but I think it's the I think it's the message, and I think another important piece too is that 
um, that music might lift people up, right? Like to the point, it depends on what kind of mood you're in. Maybe you're having a really crappy day and you listen to some Mercy Me and it peps you up and you feel hopeful and positive and now you're in a totally different place, right? Um, and, and also, uh, you're getting a message out through music that, and this is where I was going with that crossover, sometimes people don't even know it's a Christian artist. They just like the music. That's true. And so they're like really into this, let's just use Skillet, for example. They're really into that. You know what I mean? Because they like the metal sound and they're really into hard rock. When they, so you're kind of indirectly infiltrating this message in, and they don't even know it. Because if you say, maybe, hey, you want to listen to some Christian music? They're going to go, what? I don't want to listen to Christian Christian music. What am I, some kind of a holy roller or Bible put thumper? Put that skillet on. But you put that skillet on, they don't even know they're listening to a Christian band. Who's this, man? This is cool. Right. So I think that's really important. I mean, I read Lecrae's book uh, last year. Okay. Um, and he talks about that. He talks about, you know, when he first went to an award show and he was basically shunned by the music community. Like, they didn't even recognize he was there because he was a Christian artist. Like, <laughs> you're, you're a Christian, you know, and, you, and also, and you rap and this, you know what I mean? So um, the book was really good and it was really, uh, a really easy read and telling and, you know, how humbled he was, not only where he came from, but what he experienced in his journey of being recognized as a musician, recognized as an artist, and and accepted in the musical community because just the simple fact that they he was introduced as a Christian artist, they were like, get away, we don't want any part of you. Like he was going to try and convert them or something on purpose, right? Um, so it was viewed as a negative. And it was a huge overcoming. And that, that impacted him, you know, emotionally and as an artist and as a person. And so... You know, and I also think that the preference, uh, you know, we, we experience it in, in our other church that, churches that we go to or have been at is, you know, you get into like this worship wars of a generational thing, if right, you will, where right. the younger people like the more contemporary Christian and then, you know, you have your, let's face it, older yeah, generation right. that likes the traditional um you know, I know churches, well, even here in Bismarck, where the early service is for the older folks. They'll right. play traditional music there. Right. And then later, they have a second service where it's Christian contemporary music. Well, we did that you know uh, I mean? at the Church of Manchester. Right, you did it there um, in, in you know, my, my music group, we did a contemporary Christian service at 6 on Sunday nights. Um, and then they had all the regular Catholic masses. So that brings me to my second question for everybody is... The church you go to, or if you have a, a number of churches that you go to, that's that's not uncommon these days. What music do they play? Not what music do you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> what music do they play at the church that you go to? Is it traditional, or is it contemporary Christian? So, type your answers, and I just I'm just curious. And while you're doing that, I have to read something, and I found this on the internet, and. To me, it was uh, it was eye opening. So, this is uh, objecting to um, church music. Okay, let's just put it that way. So, it says somebody is uh, writing in criticism. It says there are several reasons reasons for opposing it. One, it's too new. <laughs> so they're opposing the new the new church music that's being played. Right. Two. It's often worldly, even blasphemous. The new Christian music is not as pleasant as the more established style. Because <laughs> there are so many songs, you can't learn them all. It puts too much emphasis on instrumental music rather than on godly lyrics. The new music creates disturbances, making people act indecently and disorderly. The preceding generation got along without it just fine. <laughs> it's a money-making scene, and some of these new music upstarts are lewd and loose. So That seems pretty harsh. My other question is, is this review for the new contemporary Christian music, or do you think it's an older review? I think it's a new review. 
You think it's a new review? Yeah, and I, it just bothers me that somebody considers it blasphemy because if you're... How can it be blasphemy? It's not like you're misquoting scripture. I mean, you're sharing a message about love or whatever, you know, you're referencing that you that you learned from this big book. Okay? So, how is talking about I don't understand how I just I just don't understand. It's a money-making scene and some of the new music upstarts are lewd and loose. This was written in 1723. That's funny. Right. Well, it was look. Written in 1723 uh, by a pastor attacking Isaac Watts, the writer of great hymns like "When I Survey the Wondrous Cross," "Joy to the World," "O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past." Jeez. That's the the modern review in 1723. It kind of makes me think about generationally in general, right? Right. Our parents complained about our music. We complain about our kids' music. Our kids will complain about their kids' music. Our grandparents complain about our parents' music, right? Uh, it's just, I think, because it's new, therefore it's unknown, therefore it's uncomfortable. Well, the piano was invented, like, couldn't really get a really good date, but like 1700, 1709, that's when it was, like, invented by the inventor. Right. And then it didn't become mainstream for, you know, a number of years after that. And the organ actually started in the third century, but it never really, let's say the modern noises that we hear or sounds that we hear coming from the organ really wasn't perfected until the 17th century. So, you know, when I was sitting down and reading this and praying about it and thinking about it, I, I thought, well, what, what did they think before the, the piano and the organ came in, okay? Uh, and that's that's what they thought. It was lewd and decent. That's crazy. Upstarts, making a music scene, money. It's just funny to me. Again, it just bothers me. Like, you tell, we're supposed to make a joyful noise. We're supposed to uh, sing our praises, right? So how can how can any form of of sharing joy and happiness be blasphemy that drives me yeah crazy. bill I, I i saw your comment before my time <laughs> thank you actually <laughs> <laughs> you know so that just really and you know it's funny that you say that's a really old um that was written in 1723 that was written in 1723 yet i heard that recently oh yeah that you know that's what i mean that's what, like you know what i kind of i've even you. heard like even people think that um you know, other, you know, Billy Graham and, and Joel Olstein and all these other uh, people who are sharing the message in whatever avenue and means medium, they, right, whatever medium, medium they is. technology, you know, they have access to and good for the world um, to have that. Uh, there are some who consider if you're not in the four walls of a church, then you're being blasphemous. Okay, Just like it well, says here, there are several reasons for opposing. Number one. It's too new. That music is just too new. Two, it's often worldly, even blasphemous. Right. It just that part just kills me, right? Because it's 1723 though. Like, right, but <laughs> it goes back to all those other conversations that we've had that uh, if you read, you're supposed to be sharing a big joyous thing and making a joyous and I mean, look, we've talked about this. If I could make water into wine, heck, sign me up. Not a good thing. It's not gonna happen. Though. No. Uh, but you don't have to be in the everything outside of just the four walls. Well, it always it comes down to genuine Christian love and respect, does it not? Right, that is across the board. Whether you're a Christian or you're a non-believer, still the fundamental basics of being a good person, hoping that you get into heaven someday. Is being good and kind and nice. Well, respectful. I mean, and I would respectful. not, for example, you know, putting stumbling blocks in front of people. Like, I would not get into my truck with, um, I don't know, an older person from the older generation. Right. And throw on some red or some skillet. You no, know what I mean? It's a respect and blast thing. It. But there's hardly any respect in our generation i mean our society in general secular right now. secular yeah. hardly any 
while even within the church, there's a tremendous <laughs> lack of disrespect that I've witnessed firsthand. Well, yeah. Tremendous amount of disrespect. We gotta keep on hitting that button. And baby. just being mean and just being unkind and just Christian for no love. and for no reason. Other than I think intimidation, right? Um, people are fearful and they're intimidated in things that they are not comfortable with or people they're not comfortable because they don't know them. Like don't judge the book by the cover kind of thing. Right? Mm. That's what people do. That's human nature. I mean, it it's is true. Something right? new. Something uh, scary. Right. And to Bill's point, you know, people say, well, you can't worship in your home. That's not worshiping. Well, so your prayers don't count any less if you're next to your bed versus over in the pew. They really don't. And I haven't found any place, and I'll stand corrected, in the book that says prayers only matter if they're said in the four walls. I didn't read that. Because then Jesus did a heck of a lot of praying, and he was not in four walls. Look at all the different monasteries, Bill says. Good point. Good point yeah. as always. I think that we have the knowledge that we do and the technology that we do because we're supposed to use it in oh, a yeah. positive fashion. Glorify and, God. And if you don't like it, well, get to the back of the train. <laughs> so, upcoming events. <laughs> get to the back of the truck stop. <laughs> yes, the truck stop last week. Um, <coughs> hope you enjoyed last week's prayer and share because we had a great time doing it. Um, the Sunday, we're going to be doing 5 o'clock again. Yes. We might even be outside if the weather cooperates. Well, so. the group voted to be outside. It's supposed right. to be in the 60s. Right. And sunny. So, 60s and sunny. We So, we'll be on there about 5.15-ish, 5.20 with the sermon if you want to watch the message Sunday. And then we're not coming back for prayer and share until in two weeks, until May 22nd. Right, because I'm gone be, next week. You're going to yeah. be gone, so... We haven't figured out that technology Skyping Switch. thing. So <laughs> let's uh, let's close in a word of prayer, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Dear Lord, we're so happy that we can come to you and and sing praises to you, dear Lord, and that indeed, as as David has written in the Psalms, to make a joyful <clears throat> joyful noise for the Lord, and that all forms of music are acceptable when we're praising Jesus, when we're praising God, and that may we lead by example. And those who may not know you, may they have their hearts and their eyes open to the Holy Spirit through music, dear Lord. We give thanks that you created us with these talents to play music, to listen to music, to, to just enjoy it. Another one of your creations and blessings that sometimes we just take for granted, Lord. Just thank you so much. And please be with everybody that's watching this and can hear my voice. And may the Holy Spirit bless them the rest of their work week, dear Lord. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. Oh, you lost your thing. I'm going to put it back up there. No, that's fine. We're all no. good. You can just sign us out, actually. Just tap the camera. <laughs> We're changed, right? <laughs>